we are right about at the boil now and there's quite a bit of foaming you can see some boiling activity I expect to see the hot break now any second so I'm gonna keep stirring this so that we don't scorch anything and once we have the hot break which I guess is gonna happen here in the next minute or two I'll back off the heat and we'll start the clock for 90 minutes we had the hot break uh, the kettle foamed up pretty good had a little bit of boil over, which you can see the remnants of around the rim there, but everything fell back in. We didn't lose much of anything at all. And now there is a nice heavy boil going on. Before the boil kettle got up to temperature, I took a sample of the uh, pre-boil wort and took a gravity reading. I cooled it down in that glass of ice there. We're at room temperature now and the pre-boil volume is coming in at a gravity of about 1.042 and in 9.8 gallons that translates to a total gravity of about 411.6 so if we divide that by the seven and a half gallons that we expect to end with that comes out to 54.88 and the recipe that we're making today calls for a original gravity of 1.055 so we actually hit the gravity right on the head and in my system that's an efficiency of about 70 percent. We're 30 minutes into the boil with 60 minutes left the first edition 0.7 ounces of northern brewer hops is in the boil and it smells amazing. We're at about 15 minutes left in the boil, and here comes the second hop addition. We've got an ounce total. That is a half ounce of Cascade and a half ounce of Centennial. Our time is up. That's been a 90 minute boil. So we are going to cut the gas. Make sure everything's closed off. And we do have one last hop addition, another ounce total. So that's a half ounce Centennial, half ounce of Cascade. I'm gonna stir that in there. Then I'm gonna stir this up real good, get a nice whirlpool going. Then I'm gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes so everything can uh, settle in a nice cone at the bottom of the boil kettle. There is a nice whirlpool going on. We're going to let this settle for about 15 minutes so that everything can kind of sit at the bottom and we don't pull any of the hop or hot break into the plate chiller. So while that's settling, I'm going to get that plate chiller ready, going to run some sanitizing solution through it. Uh, currently the fermenter is holding the sanitizing solution, so that's ready to go. Just to give you an update here, uh, there's sanitizing solution all throughout the uh, wart portion of the plate chiller in all the tubing and uh, in the tubing that will be uh, put into the fermenter. So everything that will be touching the wort is now being sanitized. In about 10 minutes or so when everything's kind of settled, I will drain all the sanitizing solution out of here and we will begin chilling. The temperature in the kettle here is uh, about 175. It's probably higher than that because you can see that the thermometer is actually out of the wart right now. So uh, I guess it's probably up around 200, but it's coming through the pump here at a pretty slow rate. That ball valve is mostly closed. Going through the plate chiller here, you can see that it's coming out the other side at 68 degrees, which is fantastic. Going up and into the fermenter. Got a just a garden hose hooked up to the uh, bottom of the plate chiller and coming out to the driveway and the water coming out it's lukewarm. We just reached the end of our cooling session here. The boil kettle ran down to approximately uh, where the ball valve comes in there 
and of course when the pump reaches air it stops working so we still have some work going through there still hanging out at 68 degrees in the inline thermometer and boom right at five and a half gallons so we are right on here can kind of make out the cone at the bottom of all the sediment, the hops, the hop break. And stir that up, you can see all that stuff. We did a, like I said, that 15 minute whirlpool and all that stuff stayed at the bottom. None of it got in that plate chiller, which if it had, that would have been a pain, in the, you know, to clean it out. So there we have it. I wasn't going to show you any cleaning, but I thought this uh, might be useful to someone cleaning the plate chiller. I took the garden hose off because, well, we don't need that anymore. And what I did here is I just reversed the uh, in and the out, so I'm back flushing the plate chiller with water, actually warm water that I collected from uh, the garden hose as it was chilling the wart. So now I got warm, fresh water coming through, going in where the wart came out, and going through the hose where uh, the wart came in. And it's a pretty efficient way of cleaning this system. Just wanted to follow up with the final gravity here. Uh, this is at room temperature, and we're looking at one 0 0.055 exactly where we were aiming and nice and clear can't wait for this one to be done it's gonna be tasty and finally the last step here we are at about 69 70 degrees I used to have a aeration stone but can't find it so I did the old school method and just shook it until uh, I was tired so that's why there's a lot of that foam up top there but uh, I got two vials of yeast here I'm a little lazy to make a starter so I just spend the extra six bucks and use two vials so alright number one and of course I'm trying to film and pour yeast at the same time so I get it everywhere and number two is the same way so after this I'm gonna start at about 70 degrees until fermentation fermentation gets going and then I'm gonna move it out to the garage where the temperatures are pretty consistent uh, 65 and we'll let it go until it needs to be racked to the secondary